بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهل وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا سهلا الحمد لله رب العالمين So we are now tonight إن شاء الله we're going to discuss the second afa, the second evil of the tongue. And uh, as we learn these things, it is, it, it, it's our duty, once we've learned it, to try to, uh, to put it to practice. And we'll feel uh, how much we, a person has progressed in his deen and in his spiritual uh, upliftment and uh, you know, his progress towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he tries to implement these things. Uh, it's a very difficult in the beginning, and when it becomes easy, one can feel that one has uh, improved in one's, um, in one's adab with the tongue, one's etiquette with the tongue, how to speak, how to control it. It's all part, a very fundamental part of our deen. Like Imam al-Shafi, uh, rahimahullah wa radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, said, and it's not the only one, there are many, many other ulama that said something similar to this. He said that the deen is divided in three, right? There is the a'mal al-jawarih, the actions of the limbs. The sharia covers a great deal of how we should behave now, our actions, physical actions. And then the, that's one third. And then another third is the amal al qalb, the actions of the heart, such as how to have strong iman, how to establish taqwa Allah in the heart, how to have tawakkul ala Allah, how to have sabr, and all of these things. They are a big, big uh, um, part of our deen. And then the other third, the last third, is the amal al lisan. The amal al lisan. These amal, they are also very, very vast. So a third of our deen is based on how one uses one's tongue. So this particular afa is called fudul al kalam, excess of speech. And how many times do we are we asked to say something, and we end up saying too many words? One could have said in two words or even in one word. No? And this is how Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's behavior used to be. Kana min asmatin nas. He was to be, used to be of the uh, silentest, most silent of people. He didn't speak unless it was necessary to speak. And this is a good example of uh, fudul al-kalam. Now Imam Ghazali will take us like with uh, al-kalam fi ma la ya'ni through um, the ahadith and what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about the futul al-kalam. So Imam Ghazali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa rahimahullah wa nafa'na bihi wa bikum Imam Ghazali may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be merciful to him and may, may we benefit through him and through you. He says, wa huwa aydan madhmum. He says, futul al-kalam is also madhmum. Madmu means it's also blameworthy. وَهَذَا يَتَنَاوَلُ الْخَوْضُ فِي مَا لَا يَعْنِي وَالزِّيَادَةِ What happens when a person speaks a lot? Now, he ends up speaking about things that's not of his concern. He enters into خَوْض فِي الْبَاطِلِ which is speaking about the vile, the impermissible, the haram, which is also a big, big afa. He speaks, he lies, he makes ghibah, he makes namima. All of these are, are possibilities when a person speaks too much. Right? Was ziyada. Fima yani ala qadr al haja. So when it happens, these things happen when a person speaks more than what is needed. Fa inna man ya 
من من يعنيه أمر يمكنه أن يذكره بكلام مختصر ويمكنه أن يجسمه ويقرره ويكرره ومهما تأدى مقصوده بكلمة واحد فذكر كلمتين نعم so Imam Ghazali says if a person speaks about matters that concerns himself right sometimes the person can exaggerate it so let's say for example the person now speaks only about matters that concern themselves that matters the person can exaggerate as I say stop the lying the riba and the namima and all of those things and the person doesn't do that but he speaks only about what concerns him like a salih mu'min would do sometimes they can exaggerate that now sometimes they can uh, repeat it sometimes they can affirm it right that they have read so many khatam so they have done things uh, you know of the you know extraordinary praising themselves they're speaking about themselves but there are other afat other uh, evils that come in play as they speak about matters that, that is of their own concern so imam ghazali says listen he says as much uh, if a person can achieve one's goal in one speech if you want to say something and you can say it in one word to say the second word is fudul al-kalam no to say the second word is fudul al-kalam in other words you say fadlun anil haja there is a need you need to say one word to say extra is fadl is extra is uh, fudul al-kalam which is the madmum the blameworthy trait of speaking in excess وهو أيضا مذموم لما سبق وإن لم يكن فيه إثم ولا ضرر. Now it's very important to know that we don't say it is haram, it is مذموم from the point of view that the person fills their time up with things, with words that are unnecessary, not to their benefit and not to their detriment. Now, so it's not haram. We say there's no there's no ethem in it, there's no sin in it, and there's no darar, it doesn't harm. However, listen to what Imam Al Ghazali says, he says, Qala Ata ibn Abi Rabah. Ata ibn Abi Rabah says, In man kana kabalakum kanu yakrahuna fudul al kalam wa kanu ya yuiduna fudul al kalam ma ada kitab Allah ta'ala wa sunnati rasulillahi. أو أمرا بمعروف أو ناهي من عن المنكر أو تنطق بحاجتك في معيشتك التي لا بد لك منها. This particular person, Ata ibn Abi Rabah, is describing the akhlaq of the Sahaba. He says, إن من كان قبلكم those of who lived before you is speaking to the tabi'een, not to our people. He's speaking to the tabi'een. Those of who lived before you, our tabi'een, he says. كانوا يكرهون فضول الكلام. They used to dislike to speak extra words. They didn't speak much. The Sahaba رضوان الله عليهم they didn't speak much. When the people came to Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud in Kufa, they asked him, "If only you could have a class every single day, people will benefit so much, and they would indeed, because Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was that companion." That was of the fuqaha of the Sahaba. He was of the, the scholars and the jurists of the Sahaba. Imam Abu Hanifa took a great amount of ilm from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. It has been said that the fiqh of, the fiqh of Imam Abu Hanifa is, has been taken from the companion Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Um, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said to them, كان رسول صلى الله كنا نسأل رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم مثل هذا فقال we asked رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم the same question and رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم 
He said, Inni atahawwalu alaykum makhafata an yamallun or an tamallun. I, I do a class or I do a presentation now and then, not every day, out of fear that you will get tired or you will get bored. Yatamallun or tatamallun, which means you become bored. So Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did this and he said, I do the same. I won't do a class every single day. Only now and then. Makhafata ayyata anta tamalloon. Out of fear that you might become bored of this deen and say, well, this deen is now getting too much for us. People can get bored of listening deen every, every single day. Some people don't. But the ordinary Muslim, they might get bored of listening to the deen every single day. Talib ila might not. A person who's salih, who loves the deen, might not. No? So there is a hikmah in not speaking too much. And uh, this is a lesson for us looking at uh, Sayyidina Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, how he implements the akhlaq of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even though they possess the hikmah, even though they possess the wisdom, the wisdom, even though they know that giving of knowledge to these people, they will benefit, they will maybe increase their a'mal, even though they know that, they didn't say, they didn't speak. No? Because it's fudul al-kalam, it's not the right time. Perhaps. No. So, Atta ibn Abi Rabah, he says, the people before you, the Sahaba, Ridwanullah alayhim, kanu yakrahoon. Kariha means to dislike, they dislike to speak a lot. وَكَانُوا يُعَدُّونَ فُضُولَ الْكَلَامِ They used to consider anything فُضُولَ الْكَلَامِ except excess of speech, except the Book of Allah when they read the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a person can fill their whole day up with the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they can read from the morning till dhuhr just the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is what the companions used to do they used to you know, live with the Kitab Allah. Wa sunnah to Rasulillah. And they used to speak the sunnah of Rasul, imparting the ahadith, right? Or they would fulfill, they fill the time up with the etiquettes of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the, the uh, lisani, the, the tongue etiquettes, if you like. This is what they used to do. And what they used to do is Amr bil Ma'aruf, they used to command the good and they used to forbid the evil. وَتَنَطُّقْ بِحَاجَتِكَ فِي مَعِيشَتِكَ أَلَّتِي لَا بُدَّ لَكَ مِنْهَا And they only used to speak what is absolutely necessary for their livelihood to continue normally. Right? Other than that, they would not speak. Allahu Akbar. Because they heard Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that watch what you say because every single word that a person say in this world, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is going to ask us about it. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is going to ask us about it. So this is what they felt. Everything other than this used to be considered fudul al-kalam, excess of speech. أَتُنْكِرُونَ أَنَّ عَلَيْكُمْ حَافِظِينَ كِرَامًا كَاتِبِينَ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشِّمَالِ قَعِيدٍ مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ Mama Ghazali says, after hearing how the Sahaba used to love, do you disbelieve? Or do you deny that there is hafidin, kiraman, katibin, angels sitting on your shoulders, taking down every single word that you say? This is in the Quran, in Surah uh, Qaf, or Quran al-Majid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, لا يلفظ من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد There's no word that leaves the mouth except that there is uh, two angels sitting, kiraman, katibin, kiraman, the honorable writers, Sitting, atid, raqib. Raqib means to watch that mouth and to see, look at every single word or listen to every single word that comes out and writing it down. 
It is raqib in atid. They are very quick to write it down. No? So a person uh, speaks speak much. The possibility for them to say things that are completely haram, not mubah, but haram, is greater than the person who speaks less. أما يستحي أحدكم إذا نشرت صحيفته التي أملاها صدر النها صدر النهاره كان أكثر ما فيه ليس من أمر دينه ولا دن ولا دنيا نعم إمام غزال says isn't there any don't we become shy when we sit in the evening and we contemplate over what we have said during the day and when صحيفة our scroll that we imagine in front of us what is on there what we have said during the day or during the day that we find on it nothing of the deen sometimes right and of the necessary dunya things that we need but rather a lot of fudul and kalam this is not the akhlaq of a mu'min وعن بعض الصحابة it has been related that some of the sahaba used to say إن الرجل أمان لا يتكلم بكلام لجوابه لجوابه أشهى إلي من الماء البارد إلى إلى الضمآن فأترك جوابه خيفة أن يكون فضولا. Listen to this again. The adab of the Sahaba رضوان الله عليهم something very very uncommon. In our, in our time, it has been said that the Sahaba, Ridwanullah alayhim, they said, A man la yatakallamuni bi kalamin. A man comes and speaks to me, and they ask me a question. To answer that question is, ashha, <coughs> is more temptatious to me than a glass of cold water on a scorching hot day. That answer is more tastier to me than that water, that cold water on a scorching hot day, a very hot day. فَأَتْرُكَ جَوَابَهُ Then I leave, I leave the answering of that question. خِيفَةً Out of fear, أَيَّكُونَ فُضُولًا Just because it might be fudul. It might be fudul. It might be excess of speech. No? Now, Sayyidina Dawood al tai Sayyidina Dawood al tai is one of the great, great Sufis. Allahu Akbar. And Imam Abu, uh, Abu, Abu Al-Qasim Al-Qushayri speaks about him in the Risala Al-Qushayriya, the principles of Sufism. You all might have heard about this book. It's a beautiful book translated uh, it's, uh, from Arabic to English. And... Um, he speaks about Dawood al tai Dawood al tai used to be a contemporary of Imam Abu Hanifa. And the great Sufi that he was, he was also a great faqih and a great lughawi, a great mufassir. Naam? He was a great uh, um, uh, muhaddith. This is Sayyidina Dawood al tai that people hear of, and when they hear his name, they think tasawwuf, tasawwuf, tasawwuf. How did he become so great in the eyes of the people in tasawwuf that nobody will forget him? He came into the dars of Imam Abu Hanifa, and every time there was a question, whenever whenever hand raised, Sayyidina Dawood al tai could answer the question just as good as Imam Abu Hanifa. But he kept him on the level lower than Imam Abu Hanifa for, because of his humbleness. And then one day, uh, he came to Imam Abu Hanifa and he said, Ya, uh, ya, ya, ya Imam, what is after this knowledge? So he, he said, now Imam Abu Hanifa told him, after this knowledge is now to put it to practice. And those words of Imam Abu Hanifa penetrated so deeply into the heart of uh, Imam Dawood al tai that when he heard it, he felt silent for long, right? And he said to himself, putting this to practice, because he was a very vocal man, 
outspoken. He could object, he could refute, he could argue, he could debate. No? So he stayed away for a long time from the majlis of Imam Abu Hanifa. And then uh, Imam Abu Hanifa missed him. But Imam Dawood al tahi when he said his nafs started speaking to him, and he spoke back to his nafs, he said, this uzla, this seclusion is easier for you. Let me see how you will take sitting in the class of Imam Abu Hanifa and not saying one word. That to answer and to debate and refute, this was the work of Imam Dawood al tahi all the time. He was a thrifty, very quick, intelligent talib ilm. When he sat in the class, then he discovered how hard it was. And it was never heard in the majlis of Imam Abu Hanifa that Imam Dawood al tahi says one single word or ask one single question or refute one single argument he just said. He just sat and he said, and that brought him to the maqam of uh, wilaya. He's, uh, he disciplined his nafs um, to not to say anything. وَقَالَ مُطَرِّفْ لِيُعَظَّمْ جَلَالُ اللَّهِ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ فَلَا تَذْكُرُوهُ عِنْدَ مِثْلِ قَوْلِ أَحَدِكُمْ لِلْكَلْبِ وَالْحِمَارِ اللَّهُمَّ خَزِيْهِ وَمَا أَشْبَهَ ذَلِكَ Now, also of the Fudul al-Kalam is sometimes people say words uh, that, um, that is unbecoming of a Muslim to, 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 to utter, like dog, for example, like uh, himar. You know, sometimes it might be mentioned, but uh, in a state with, of, uh, with wisdom or in the right time, the right, the right place, a person should mention these words, but people might use this word or abuse the, the usage of this of these words: dog, uh, himar, right? Allahu maghzi, wa ma ashba dalik. And a person might say, when a person uses these words, the person might say, Oh Allah, you know, uh, destroy dogs or destroy uh, um, swines and these type of thing. When a person see a dog, when a person see a uh, a swine or whatever. You know, it does happen sometimes you drive along and you see uh, dogs doing all sorts of funny things and, say, and, then you, and then you say, Oh Allah, destroy dogs or whatever. This is how the Arabs used to uh, look at, at, at dogs and, and swines as, as well. In the Shafi Madhab, it is, it is sunnah to, to, kill a, <laughs> to kill a swine. No. It is sunnah to kill a swine. So people might have with this particular mentality, they might just say words when they see a swine unnecessarily. This Mutarif used to say, this is Fudur al-Kalam. When a person says something, sees something and comment on it, these are all Fudur al-Kalam. Especially, he mentions here the examples of the dog and the swine. Now, so Imam Ghazali says, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ فُضُورَ الْكَلَامِ لَا يَنْحَصِرْ بَلْ الْمُهِيمِ Mahsur fi kitab Allah Ta'ala. Imam Ghazali says, We have to be warned that Fudur al Kalam, access of speech, la yan hasir. There's no, no, no limit to it. People can speak about anything. And when they start speaking and they're taking topics and plucking to topics out of the air, or whatever the eye see, they speak about it, whatever they hear, they speak about it and comment about it, all of these things. There's no limit to Fudur al-Kalam. So it's a very hard, hard thing to do, not to speak in excess. So he says, the necessary Kalam is all gathered in the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah An-Nisa, verse 114. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا خير في كثير من نجواهم. There's no good. In plenty of their najwa in their speech, illa except the one man amara bi sadaqatin, the one who orders with the charity. No? 
Now, charity is something very broad. A charity is إِصَّالُ الْخَيْرِ إِلَى الْغَيْرِ To transmit good to somebody else. So, it could be through word as well. Like said, uh, Shu'aib informed me now when we were traveling to use shell, uh, shell petrol because they cleaner, it lasts longer in, your, in the tank and so on. But there's benefit in that. That's a charity. No? It's a charity, so you, you inform somebody about something that would benefit them in the future, whether it is in the dunya or in the akhirah, that is a charity. It could, it could mean that you can do it with your mouth. So, illa except man amara bi sadaqatin, except the one who order with a charity. O ma'arufin, or the one who commands the good. O islahin bayna nas, or the one who mends the hearts of people. Right? A person who mends the hearts of people, this person has done khair. This is uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala considered to be to be words that's not fudul al-kalam. Somebody who orders with a charity, in other words, whatever he speak, speaks is of benefit to mankind. Khairukum or khairun nas, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, anfa'uhum linnas. The best of people are those who are more beneficial to people. No. Subhanallah, you sit in people's kalam, and then they speak about other people, what benefit is in there? Right? You sit in people's kalam, they boast about themselves, they speak about themselves, what they have done, what they have bought. People can speak for hours on end about houses, house prices, businesses, you know, with very little faida for the next person. And this is the problem that we have in our communities. We could have said making dhikrullah and be quiet for our own benefit and for the benefit of others. Now, but nowadays people, if you're not entertaining enough, they will leave. Now, and this is how the awliya used to be. People used to come to them and they didn't say a word, they would sit. And the hal would speak. People who don't want that and they want entertainment, they would stand up and they would leave. But it didn't bother the awliya. They would carry on sitting because I'm responsible for my own actions. Right? I'm not here to entertain people and tell them about all the fancy things that I've witnessed this week. You know, and all the interesting things that I've come across this week. There's no need to do that. This is Fudul al kalam So, Tuba. In uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Glad tidings be to the one, Amsaka fadla min lisanihi tuba. Glad tidings be to the one who holds back the access of his words, of his tongue. Wa anfaqa and spend the access of his money. He says, Fandur, look, kayfa qallaba nasul amr fi dalika. Look how man or how the people today, this is now a thousand years ago because Imam Ghazali lived a thousand years ago. We are in the 1500s after Hijrah. Imam Ghazali lived 500 after Hijrah. So a good thousand years ago, Allahu Akbar. But look at mankind. Has it changed much? No, it hasn't changed much. Now that is why the nasiha of the Quran and the nasiha of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is as effective and can be listened to and it will sound as crisp and clear as if it is khabar or advice given to us by a contemporary guide, spiritual guide. كَيْفَ قَلَّبَ النَّاسُ الْأَمْرِ فِي ذَلِكْ And look, he says, how people changed it around. They hold back the access and the money and the access of, of the words. They let that out. وأطلقوا فضل لسانه وعن مطرف ابن عبد الله ابن أبي عن أبيه قد قدمت على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في رهط من بني عامر فقال أنت والدنا وأنت سيدنا وأنت أفضلنا وعلينا فضلا وأنت أطولنا علينا وأنت جفنة الغراء وأنت 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 so this particular hadith is related by uh, Abdullah ibn Ubay, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, Mutrif ibn Abdullah and Abihi. Mutarif ibn Abdullah, he relates 
from his father, he says, "Qadimtu ala Rasulillah." I came to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam while he was sitting with a group of people, min bani Amirin, people from bani Amir. Fakalu, and then they said, "Anta waliduna, you are our father, and you are our Sayyid, and you are the most meritorious amongst us, and you are the, uh, you have fadlun alayna, you have." A merit above us, and you the one that spends and most generous amongst us, and you the most, the one that shines out the most amongst us, and the captain saying these things. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to them, Stop, say your words, and don't let shaytan. Swallow you up, or don't let shaitan misguide you when you speak. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't like this continuous praise one after the other. He said, stop, say your words, and don't let shaitan misguide you with your, uh, uh, when it comes to your tongue. Isharatan ila anna lisan idha atlaqa bithana'i walaw bisidq fa yukhsha an yastahu ya shaitan. And Imam Ghazali says here, yeah, this is an ishara that even when a person speaks the truth, one should be cautious not to let the tongue roll. Because to praise Rasul as much as one can is praiseworthy, is good, is meritorious. But even in something that is the haqq, like that, like praising, and what is more haqq than praising Rasul? Right? So even in the truth, matters of truth, a person needs to be cautious. Say your truthful matter or say your matter very uh, clear and short and crisp and to the point. So shaitan can... can uh, uh, influence a person through his wasawis to say so many many words that's unnecessary. وَقَالَ إِبْنُ مَسْعُودٍ أَنْذَ أَنْذِرْكُمْ فُضُولَ كَلَامِكُمْ حَزْبَ مَرِئٍ مِنَ الْكَلَامِ مِنَ الْكَلَامِ مَا بَلَغَ بِهِ حَاجَتُهُ And Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud used to say, I warn you people not to speak too much don't speak too much, he used to say. It is enough for a man to speak only so much to fulfill his need. To fulfill his need. And subhanAllah, the Sufis used to teach people, until today they do teach the people the same lesson, and that is not to ask many questions. Not to ask many questions. You sit in the bus and you need the time. Right? And you don't have a watch. You don't need to go stand up and ask a question. And, uh, you know, this is unnecessary. You could have looked and glanced to somebody's watch and see the time. Wallahi, I heard this from, from one of the Sufis saying these words. And this coincides with the adab of the salaf of salihin they would not go and ask unnecessary questions now, nowadays they're trying to teach the kids to think independently and not to abruptly random jump up with a question if you sit in a class of, with kids you see kids they sometimes can't think independently they go like this raising hands asking questions randomly and the teacher has to is bombarded with so many questions now she had her head spins trying to find an answer for every single child this is how our culture is you know? but rather the culture that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us is to have control over the tongue and not to speak unless it is needed وَقَالَ مُجَاهِدْ إِنَّ الْكَلَامِ لَا يُكْتَبْ حَتَّى أَنَّ الرَّجُلْ لَا يَسْكُدْ إِبْنُهُ فَيَقُولُ إِبْتَاعَ لَكَ كَذَا وَكَذَا فَيُكْتَبْ كَذِبًا Subhanallah. Al-Mujahid said, 
He said, Inna kalam la yukta, speech are being written down. He said, beware of this. He said, we don't, we don't bother ourselves with this, this, this type of kalam and this type of nasiha. But we need to and we need to spread it. Al-Mujahid, great Mufassir, as you all know, great Mufassir, they took, we took from Ibn Abbas, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, Abdullah ibn Abbas. He said, Inna al-kalam la yukta, the speech of man is written down, hatta even a man would say to his son, so that he can be quiet. You know, if the, if the, if the son, you know, throws a tantrum, I mean, look, this is a, this is again a thousand years ago. Children used to throw tantrums there, maybe not as much as today. But a man might say to his son, be quiet, I'll buy you this and I'll buy you that. فَيُكْتَبُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كِذْبَةً And it's written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, lie. Like things that we do, no? those who are our parents, we do this sometimes to quiet the little one, to quiet the big one, sometimes the big one who is 13 years old needs to be quiet. And uh, this uh, could be written down as a kithban or kathaban. A person is, might be written down as, as kathab, as a liar. وَقَالَ الْحَسَنِ يَا يَبْنُ آدَمْ بَسَطَّ لَكَ صَحِيفَةً وَوَكَّلَ بِهَا مَلَكَانِ كَرِيمَانِ يَكْتُبَانِ أَعْمَالَكَ فَعْمَلْ مَا شِئْتَ وَأَكْثِرْ أَوْ أَقْلِلْ And this is a nasiha of a great, great, great wali and one of the sayyid of the tabi'een and his name is Hassan al-Basri. What did he say? He said to the people straight, he said, Yabna Adam, O son of Adam, Busilta laka, O basatta laka sahifatan. A scroll has been prepared for you. All your words is written down on there. Wa wukila biha malakan, and two angels has been placed over you. To, to, to take note of every single word you utter. Utter, utter. Now, yaktubani a'malaka, they write down your actions. So do uh, whatever you want, he says. Akfir, increase or decrease. So he is warning the people by saying, do whatever you want to do, the things will be recorded tomorrow. What does that mean? It doesn't mean go and do whatever you want to do in terms of the, 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 the bad. Watch what you are doing. This is the warning. Watch what you are doing because everything will be there. Words you have said that you know of and words you have said that you don't know of. <laughs> it's like somebody that came to me and said, we met Hamza Yusuf, Allah, Akbar. just uh, last year in the Rihla in Medina. And the people were with cameras, you know, 8 million pixel and I don't know what, all different types of cameras. And Shah Hamza said, what, what is this? Shah Hamza with his students is very straight, doesn't beat around the bush. He's very straight with them. He says, what is this? You're taking pictures now. He says, the best, you don't need, this is for the, for the juhal. This is for the, ign the ignorant people, the people that can't memory, he says, can't memorize. Tomorrow, tomorrow you will see all of these pictures, pictures HD quality, he said, pictures you, uh, you have taken of pictures that you know of and pictures that you don't know of. You will see them all tomorrow. So when he said pictures that you don't know of, the students were like, this is a fact. Right? So they put the cameras away. Same with the words. We say things and we remember them. Oh, I've said so and so. It was not right. It was wrong. We apologize. But there are so many words that, has been, that ha have been said that we don't know. It is recorded. Tomorrow we will see it. Clear. Clear recording. No? Very quali good quality, audio quality. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, Allah Akbar. Waruya Anna Sulaiman alayhi salam, 
This particular one is, uh, I'm not going to read that one. وقال إبراهيم التميمي إذا أراد المؤمن أن يتكلم نظر فإن كان له تكلم وإلا أمسك Another nasiha of Ibrahim التميمي of the salihin or salaf al-salihin used to say إذا أراد المؤمن المؤمن المؤمنة not any person المؤمن a believing mu'min if he wants to speak what is his his attitude with his words نظر he looks, he looks. فَإِنْ كَانَ لَهُ If it is for him, in this dunya and in the akhirah, تَكَلَّمْ He will speak. And if it's not for him, أَمْسَكْ He will hold. He will not speak. وَالْفَاجِرْ And he says, the person who's a fajir, you get mu'min, mu'mins, but they are fasiq. They, uh, they don't pray. There's fisiq. They don't wear scarf. Muslim men smoke, Muslim men who uh, do all sorts of haram, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, protect us and them, right? These are fusaq, the fajir. Imam Ghazali says the fajir, uh, Ibrahim al Tamimi says the fajir, innama lisanuhu raslan raslan. A fajir is a very uh, rolling tongue. Constantly speaks whatever he wants to say. He says, "No, he doesn't care whether it is for him or against him in this dunya or in the akhirah. He doesn't doesn't care." Waqala al Hasan again Hasan al Basri nasiha again. Man kathra kalamuhu and this is very true. He says, "Man kathra kalamuhu who speaks a lot, kathra kadibuhu his lies is a lot." وَمَنْ كَثَرَ مَالُهُ Who has a lot of money كَثَرَ ذُنُوبُهُ his, his sins is a lot. A person who has a lot of money, he has a lot of sins. وَمَنْ سَاءَ خُلُقُهُ عَذَّبَ نَفْسَهُ And a person who does not have good etiquette and good manners, he is punishing himself. Now, if a person speaks a lot, the person might end up lying a lot. That's true. No? A person, if a person weigh the the kalam of mankind on the scale of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we might not consider it to be a lie, khalas, everybody says it. You know? But in the time of the Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhim, if they can't carry something over exactly precisely as it is, right, they would hold back. Because it might be a lie. I might just say something that's incorrect. They would hold back. No? Woman kathra maluhu, whosoever has a lot of money to spend, right? People with a lot of money, they tend to spend on things that is not to their benefit in the in the, the dunya and in the akhirah. They spend it more on their nafs, on the on the self to please uh, to please themselves. And that uh, that could be anything from houses to cars to clothes to entertainment, and it goes on and on and on. Woman asa khuluquhu, so ever has bad character, he only punishes himself. Now, Waqala Amr ibn Dinar, one of the great Tabi'in, again, Takalla ma rajul ainda Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa akthara fa qala lahu, kam duna lisanika min, min hijab. Shafatai wa asnan. A man used to speak in front of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he just kept on speaking and speaking and speaking and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, Hold, how many veils have you got over your tongue and still you can't stop speaking? The man said, I don't know. He said, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, Shafatai, Shafatan, two lips and asnan and you've got teeth. Right? To cover the, the, the tongue. And that is also of the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way He Jalla, Jalla fi Ula created us. He created us with teeth to protect us from saying something and the lips. Now there's no other organ that has been covered up like the tongue. No. And some ulama say there is three, the, the tongue has been placed behind three layers of bars. The first one is the aql. 
the second one the teeth and then the third the lips قال أفما كان لك في ذلك ما يرد كلامك then the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said isn't it enough for you to stop speaking وفي رواية أنه قال ذلك في رجل أثنى عليه فاستهتر في كلامه ثم قال and it has been mentioned that the same hadith was mentioned to this particular person when the person was praising Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he went on and on and on and on and on Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said stop how many layers and how many bells have you got over your tongue that should prevent you from speaking so much wa qala umar ibn abdul aziz rahmatullahi alayhi innahu la yamna'uni min kathirin min al-kalam khawf al-mubahat Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, we all know this particular uh, Khalifa of uh, uh, the Ummah of Islam. He was known as the fifth Khalifa. Some consider him to be the fifth Khalifa because of his justness, his fairness, no? and his taqwa and his integrity and his wara'. He used to say, Innahu la yamna'ani min kathirin min al-kalam. What prevents me from a lot of words and a lot of speech, he says, خوف المباهات. He said, I might say something and uh, show off. Show off with my words. Because he was Khalifa, because he was wealthy, because he had a status in the community and not in the community of Baghdad only, but in the entire Muslim world at the time. If I speak, I might end up bragging or showing off so I stop speaking just because of that and how many times a person might say something good but internally he is bragging internally he's showing off وَقَالَ بَعْضُ الْحُكَمَاءِ إِذَا كَانَ الرَّجُلُ فِي مَجْلِسِ فَأَعْجَبَ وَالْحَدِيثِ فَلْيَسْكُدْ وَإِنْ كَانَ سَاكْدًا فَأَعْجَبَهُ السُّكُودِ فَلْيَتَكَلَّمْ so a person might now sit still and contemplate a little bit and think, wow, subhanAllah, what is there to speak? What is there to say? You know, how difficult is this? Right? How difficult is this? How can a person live in this world? There is a dhabit. A dhabit is a, a rule, a qaida that a person needs to follow. And this qaida Imam Ghazali mentions here right at the end of this particular bab, of this particular chapter. So a person can use it in our, in our speech. He says, إِذَا كَانَ الرَّجُلْ فِي مَجْلِسٍ If a man is in a majlis, or a woman is in a majlis, a majlis meaning in a group, in a circle of friends, wherever they find themselves, university, work, in the mosque, now, street, فَأَعْجَبَهُ الْحَدِيثِ فَلْيَسْكُتْ If they feel that they are, what they, whatever they're going to say now is going to make them feel proud, and make them feel that they uh, have said something so cool or so nice that the people might never forget this, what they have said, and they might be remembered for this beautiful thing. If they feel this within them, that this might give them some, some pride, some kibr, then one, no? then one keeps silent. وَإِنْ كَانَ سَاكِتًا and if the person is quiet and thinks that my silence that I have now, if I speak now, my, uh, you know, my speech might not be better than my silence. People might remember me for the silence that I, that I have showed them today or the quietness that I have uh, over me today, this uh, contentment, con contented state. This quiescency with me today is so so big that people will remember me for this. So the, per the person, if their silence uh, makes them feel proud of themselves, if they have that feeling that the, the silence will, uh, will uh, you know, give them some status, then to speak is sunnah in that particular instance. So this is a qaida that the person can use throughout one's um, situations. No? 
do you feel that you're gonna be that you're gonna feel very uh, high and lofty in the, in the in the company of your friends or your family now when you speak then don't speak and if your silence causes the same right then speak وقال يزيد ابن ابي حبيب من فتنة العالم ان ان يكون كلام احب اليه من الاستماع this is one of the fitna of the ulama the people of knowledge نعم or the talib ilm that has a lot of knowledge one of the fitan of the alim and the student of knowledge is his tongue and uh, Yazid ibn Abi Habib says of the fitna of the alim is that speech is more beloved to them than silence so this is a very good qaida for the ulama a very good qaida for the tulab al ilm excuse me or any um, student of knowledge that, uh, that studies any type of knowledge they, they might feel that uh, you know it is it's correct for them to speak, but with deep within them, they feel that this is going to cause them uh, a nice um, boost, uh, give them a, a good status. In that particular instance, it's not advisable to speak. فَإِنْ وَجَدَ مَنْ يَكْفِيهِ فَإِنَّ فِي الْإِسْتِمَاعِ سَلَامَةٌ وَفِي الْكَلَامِ تَزِينٌ وَزِيَادَةٌ وَنُقْصَانٌ Now, and if a person keeps silent, Imam Ghazali says, uh, in silence there is salama. Speech protects you. Now, where speech defends you, right? You might defend yourself, but you might defend yourself incorrectly. You might say the wrong thing while you're defending yourself. But when you keep silent, it protects you. Right? وقال ابن عمر إن أحق ما طهر الرجل لسانه. One of the ابن عمر the son of سيدنا عمر عبد الله ابن عمر he said the thing that deserves to be cleansed of a man meaning a woman as well is his tongue and nothing else. Right? It's like ابن الجوزي. And some of the ulama, uh, they said that a person who reads Quran should keep their mouth free from ghiba, free from fudul uh, al-kalam, free from speaking about the haram and the vile and the bad things that people do, uh, free from lying because the mouth is a sunduq, the mouth is a box, right? And to have ihtiram for the Qur'an, you're speaking to the tulab ul-ilam who study Qur'an, who learn Qur'an, hifz quran of the adab and the ihtiram for the Qur'an is not to put it in a box filled with all of these najasa. No? That is why Ibn Umar said, the tongue the tongue is one of those organs of the man that really deserves to be clean, cleansed. No? And this is uh, true because of sometimes we say things that is really, really in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, so bad that even the whole sea and the oceans can't wash it uh, away. And like Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to say that Aisha, Ya Aisha, laqad takallamti kalimatin law uh, if it had to be you said a word of Aisha if it had to be mixed with the sea it would have contaminated it um, it was a word of riba and she made tawbah of it so this is the end <coughs> Imam Ghazali says وَقَالَ إِبْرَمْ يُهْلَكُ النَّاسُ خِلْتَانِ فُضُولَ الْمَالِ وَفُضُولَ الْكَلَامِ Ibrahim Ibn Adham used to say he used to say two things destroy people excess of speech and excess of money فَهَذِهِ مَدَمَّةُ فُضُولَ الْكَلَامُ وَكَثْرَتُهُ وَسَبَبْ 
البعيد عليه وعلاجه وما سبق في الكلام في ما لا يعني. And the reason for people speaking a lot is exactly the same as the previous chapter that we've spoken about. Can you remember? No? The reason why people speak a lot is because uh, people are keen to find out things constantly. And al-mubasata fil kalam to to start conversations and to butter people up. Or tazjiyatul awqati or to kill time. These are the reasons. Now that the person know the reasons, person try to abstain from these reasons, not to let this happen. And the ilaj and the cure is exactly the same as the cure of uh, speech, speaking about things that's not of our concern. وعلاج ذلك كله and the ilaj is to remember death. The death is between us. And we have been given only so much time on this world, in this world. And we don't know how much time is left of us in this world. If Allah Ta'ala were to take us away tomorrow or today or tonight, would we have spoken more good with his tongue or less good? That is the question we need to ask ourselves. We are mas'ul over this tongue. No? And to know that every single kalima, every single word, word Will be, uh, will be, we will be accountable for every single word that we uttered. Wa anna anfasuna shabakatan, and that our breaths and our words that we say is like a shabaka, is like a net by which we catch all the khair, all the good. And many people don't do this; they don't use their nets to catch the khair and the good. Wa akhir da'wan alhamdulillah rabbil alamin, and we leave it today. Is there any questions? أن فضول الكلام. Yes, um, it is سنة to greet number one and to ask how is so and so. That third party, that is not sunnah. Unless we know that the person is married, right? But uh, we ask the person only in front of us how they are, how they are. It is a common thing that we do nowadays, and I'm only saying this because looking at the at the awliya, when you come into the company like Mufti Hassan Raza, other big ulama that I've met here in this country that I highly respect when you sit in the company. Kaifal Hal. There's not much speech that's going on. Now, unless we ask them a question or mas'ala, and then they would answer it very short. Very short. This is my experience of the ulama here and the ulama abroad. The, the, the salihin. Now, they would not speak continuous. Now, uh, so uh, they would ask you, "How are you?" And if they know you've got you've got family, some of them might, some of them might not. No. No. Well, alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin. It's, it's something important for us to reflect upon because our lifestyle is so much, uh, you know, uh, in, involves such a lot of speaking on a daily basis. That it becomes almost, you know, you know, this is uh, impossible. How can this happen? That we don't. Uh, how can we implement for al kalam speaking, not speaking with the excess? The excess is what makes conversations, you know. Is there any um, particular things that maybe wajib in Sharia to ask someone? Yeah, a person need to ask the question if he really needs to know uh, a masala when it when it's really something that uh, he couldn't find anywhere else. Now, um, uh, it's one of the things also that uh, what I've mentioned about the, the student in the class, the students, they don't have, uh, they, 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 they can't think independently anymore. They, they, they need to ask every time. And you find this with adults as, as well. You know, uh, you get, I get so many text messages or people ringing me up 
Sidi, you know, I'm coming on Umrah, you know, give me some nasiha. There's no need for that. <laughs> There's no need for coming and asking for nasiha. Right? The Sidi, you know, I, 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 I need to uh, do this. Uh, I'm coming on, on, on I'm traveling to, 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 to Morocco, is there any nasiha? You know, Allah, sometimes the person might ask, uh, refer to a specific thing, but many a times people just, you know, they ask broad, unnecessary questions, and uh, in my opinion. And this is, uh, you know, something that the Sahaba, they used to try to avoid asking unnecessary questions. They only ask certain questions in the Quran and they're all recorded there. And uh, those who aspire to a higher level, they, uh, you know, they read up and, uh, you know, they, they, they find themselves, uh, you know, asking Allah subhanahu to guide them and uh, connecting, connecting themselves with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prior the, to the journey, through the journey, in the case of the people who asked for nasiha. Now. Regarding the Umrah, I'm going as well, inshallah, and next right. week, uh, a lot of people have been saying to me, I'll give my salam to Rasulullah, I'll give my salam to Rasulullah, ask about that. That is sunnah, that is sunnah. Is that, that is sunnah. Can we actually do that with you when I'm there, say, um, after the actual call, we'll give his salam to you. Can I say that with their name? That yes, 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 yes. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi hears that and Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi replies to them. Now we don't hear it, but Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam hears our salams that we give to them because Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi did that himself. Now we all say that Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu not to give salams because he was alive, but he said to say that Umar, La tansana min du'aikum. So to say to Umar, don't forget us in your du'as when you go and perform your Umrah. And say to Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So it's good to ask people, it's sunnah to ask people for du'a, du'a, when they travel. Um, so there is good to know what is sunnah to do and what is not sunnah to do. And to revive it in our community, in our houses, and you know, in our neighbors and so on. So these sunnahs can be, can be revived again. And a person who revives one particular sunnah by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will be raised amongst the ulama. Only one mas'ala. One sunnah. So there are many sunnahs. If a person learn the fiqh and the adab of how good a conduct we should have as a mu'min in our different you know, spheres in our lives, in the street, in the marketplace, in the mosque, with our families, wherever, on journeys and so on, these are, these are all, all adab, it's all in our books of fiqh, and in our books of adab, in books like the Ihya al-Muddin. The person revives it, then we get the reward of being risen up fi jumurati ulama amongst the ulama. Even though it's only one mas'ala that we, that we uh, you know, that we revived. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us of the people that revived the deen. And Ihya al-Muddin is actually a book to revive to revive Islam, Ihya Ulumuddin. Ihya, the, uh, uh, the reviving of the knowledges or the sciences of the deen. At a time when people used to just learn it, learn it, learn it, to get the rewards from the government. Now, scholars used to study, and if they studied, uh, the government would take care of them, their families, and, any, and, and their parents, and the children, no? And this is if a person had to study uh, the Islamic studies in the time of Imam Ghazali. So people used to study just to get the money with the wrong intentions. No? And so the, the deen became admixed with a lot of false intentions and false knowledges and so on. So Sayyidina Imam Ghazali revived the asal of the deen which was left by the Sahaba and those predecessors before him. And this is what we have today. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Bismillah.